My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? You know, I envy you, Sherry. You can talk to other people and they won't ignore you. And I envy you. You can ignore any person you're bored with. You don't miss out on much. Most men are dull, unlike yourself. Well, I'm flattered. Home sweet home, Sherry. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. I had a surprise for my mother. I was holding an ancient Greek vase, or... You had a shovel with you, John. I remember now. We dug up the vase from Greek ruins here on Cordona and were eager to show my mother right away. For some reason, the door was closed. We knocked. But nobody answered. We thought that she was busy. So we left the vase and ran downstairs. I decided to gather some archaeological tools in order to take a closer look at the vase. But then we heard something, didn't we? Yes. Came from upstairs. The vase was broken, shards scattered all over the floor. And your mother was standing at the door. Indeed, John. I doubt it was her. Let me concentrate. Otto Richter was standing there, furious at us. Dr. Richter told us never to disturb my mother when the door is closed. He said she had broken the vase. But we didn't believe him. I bet he smashed it. Her things are still here. Presumably, Mycroft never felt the need to saw through it all. Or couldn't bring himself to... No. He would have put it behind him and moved on. My brother is not one for sentimentality. Look what I found! The White King is under attack. Sherry, can you save him and checkmate the opponent in one move? You're not obliged to be here, Sherry. We can leave any time you want. My mother loved flowers. They made her smile. I remember we would bring a new bouquet every week to make her a bit happier. That's why we collected all the violet flowers. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt island. object. This room always reeked with an acrid medicinal stench. And here is the reason.
Do you think the doctor could have used these tools here? I hope not. No labels. I doubt it ever had one. There appear to be residues of the bottle's contents at the bottom. This picture was drawn by my mother. I recognize her hand. There's a date on it, 8th of December, 1868. This seems a bit odd. I can recognize my mother's style, but it's far too sloppy. Dated 12th of February, 1869. It's difficult to tell what this is meant to represent. There's no date at all. It's a strange feeling to read about my father's death in the newspaper. I can't recall anything except the deep feeling of loss. You were too young. It happened before we even met. It's so sad. I'm sorry. straps on the bed. Just doesn't look right. One dram dissolved in a glass of water administered daily. 
not to exceed one dose in 24 hours, not to be given to children. Seems this was the most frequently used medication. some memories. Oh, I would love to take a bath right now. Not this one. Surface corrosion suggests it was prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. For medical purposes, I suppose. Nice move. You saved the king and checkmated the black king with the rook. Broken plate shards were all over the floor. Mycroft had to change his suit as the one he was wearing. Mother was troubled that morning. Something we did upset her. Dr. Richter tried to calm her down. We had to put the tray with Mother's morning tea down, but why? It's starting to ring a bell. I think it happened in the morning. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. I don't believe you! Liars! Get away from me! It's not true! It's not real! What? Oh. Everything will be okay, Sherry. I promise. It was the morning of the 9th of April, the day my mother died. My, my mother, she, she was not just ill, but bad. God have mercy. I'm sorry. That explains why you locked the memory away. There must be more, John. I, that was the morning of her death. I need to know what happened. John! Every time you... I just don't. Please, Sherry, leave it be. Just breathe, John. You know that I cannot leave the last stone unturned. We are so close. I... I know. But can we at least leave it for another day? It cannot wait. Let us find another door and finally learn the truth. That's pointless, Sherry. To date, you have had no control over the return of these memories. It is all triggered by your work elsewhere on Cordona. 
You must accept that this will have to wait. Are you all right? In the end, little has changed. My mother was still unwell, just not with tuberculosis. What I do not yet understand is why Mycroft lied about it. There are precious few pieces of this puzzle remaining, John. Let us dawdle here no longer. Indeed. Wait. Did you hear that? Yes. Metallic souls. What is a sailor doing here? Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? I was looking for you. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? You could call me your new game. The rules are simple. I have something for you, but you alone must work out what that is. And that something is my prize, I suppose? You're a fast learner, sir. I have no intention of visiting your exhibition. I have no interest in amateur artists. I'm sorry, what? You are here to invite me to your vernissage, are you not? That square-shaped something in your pocket is an invitation. Oh, yes, sir, it is, but it is not my exhibition. I only work there for Mr. Vogel himself. He has sent me to invite you to his gallery. So you're not from the Mariner's service? So even the fact that I'm your game hasn't led you to deduce that something in my appearance must be fake? Disappointing. Mr. Vogel gives you too much credit. Here is your invitation. Mr. Vogel needs your help. I hope you won't fail him again. Farewell. You won't believe it, but Werner's other idea was to put me in a dress. Mr. Holmes, you came! Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. But yes, your little riddle attracted my attention, Mr. Vogel. I'm glad to hear it, even if only as a minor distraction before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see.
Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. A simplistic attempt at provocation. Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. Old, and hasn't been used for a long time. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints. Size. Nine and a half. Sherry? How about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. <sighs> A handprint of the thing from another world. But it looks fresh and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Sodden and mould-ridden, one presumes deliberately. <laughs> Ugh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. A malpal butt. Coal fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a coal moustache. Saturn devouring his son. Of grim composition. Unflinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt, 
He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room, but the vandalism was a cover for the theft. The pieces are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Dozens of priceless works amassed simply for the sake of it and presented without care. It's not about the art, it's about excess, yes? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know, it's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel? Even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see then why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Uh huh. Mr. Vogel, my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism, but theft. The limping visitor left your place with a canvas. That's very impressive. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My, your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm. Indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman wrapped in robes, being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. 
Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news. Or at least with a good story. I think I'll leave... Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the... I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Dearie, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write information bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave. Or I shall report you to the police. Don't pass by. Welcome. Welcome. Come, come. Decorate your house in Oriental style. Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes. Do you know what makes a lady happy? 
pay it to rent. blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. It appears the wine was truly awful. <laughs> Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot see it with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. The chest has been searched. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. <sighs> Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. A normal kitchen knife. Could be the murder weapon. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. 
He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor. He grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him. It's time for some chemical magic, John. That doesn't look like the painting we need, Sherry. As expected, but that doesn't mean it won't tell us anything. Let's put it on the easel where it belongs. I guess this is his most ordinary painting. Spot the two differences, John? If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know, crimes and such like, daily routine. 
Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation, and the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No, although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right, stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Oh, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Can I ask you a question? Eh? Of course I know. To cut a long story short. Mark! 
murderers! Beasts! They're completely livid. First they come to our land, then they murder our people. Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here, so I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. People in the crowd are shouting about a murder in the camp. Are you trying to hide it? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. If it was under control, if there was no dead body, you wouldn't be as nervous as you are. You would be sitting in your cosy dark corner of a city hall room doing nothing as usual. Yet, you're here, trying to deal with a series of problems you never asked for. These insults are inappropriate. You don't know what I'm doing for this camp. Even though the rest of City Hall doesn't give a bloody squat about the refugees, maybe I didn't want to be assigned to this camp. But I'm trying to do my best for these people. If not for my work, they might not have any shelter or food even. I apologize, Mr. Harlow. Perhaps I was prejudiced towards you, but in any case, I'm sure that you would still want this to be over as quickly as possible. The current reality is that neither you nor the police are managing things well here. You are unable to calm the crowd. You have simply never handled a situation like this before. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm the City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. But in return, I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child, or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her, and I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time, but I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island. So there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. 
I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Tewksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harley. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mould. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Malpal. Soaked with salt water. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. Can you satisfy my curiosity? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Hmm, coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? A steel dirk. Sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain.
heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping John. A violent death. But this man, limping, cold us. I think we're on to something here, John. Such a mess. Let's, find out about the Let's figure it out. Go to hell. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here. Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a genius bureaucrat came up with this idea? We have seen some dark places in Cordona. But this... Clearly a left hand print here. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. A fresh crack as if the crate was hit recently. Someone bled profusely here. These events have fractured into so many pieces, but I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. A man's footprint. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A heavy boot with a worn out sole. Oh, Carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. No hint of blood or impact. Someone was dragged against their will. The refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. <laughs> the
The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. Are you able to help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. It won't do any good. That will kill, not save him. I'll use it to create a solution. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. I've collated all the ingredients, now to prepare the first aid solution.
Thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. You still here? Your problem, not mine. Go and bother someone else with this, son. Go and bother someone else with this, son. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. I'm busy. Don't you have papers to fill? <laughs> City Hall lubberheads. I'm busy. Don't you have papers to fill? Loverheads. A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. <gasps> You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. 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 You're not 
not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clock can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nela? Nela. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Naylor's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Naylor if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Naylor. My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? 
What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naylor doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Excuse me, just one question. Sorry. We don't see much here. Could you help me? Sorry. We don't see much here. This isn't working. You might need a different tack. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You still here? The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck. Two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. Sherry, wait. You might want to settle all the matters in the camp before leaving. You probably won't be coming back here anytime soon. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. May I ask you something? They often take us from the camps to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. 
At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. An impressive slice of life. The police had a lot on him and at the same time, nothing at all. Amateurs. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? You blame yourself for what you did. It won't be any good unless you confess to me, so I'll try to be polite. What sort of did are we talking about? Are you from the press? I'm here because of Naylor. Who? You don't remember her name. Lad, if you won't tell me where you came, I'll call for someone here to sort you out, if you get my meaning. Do you recognize this man? Hmm. We definitely look alike. But you have the wrong person. Really? Then you won't mind if I pass this along to the newspaper? All right. All right. Is this about money, as you said in the letter? 
What kind of sum are we talking about? I've never written a single word to you. Bribery, not my style. So, that letter, it wasn't from you? Well, it appears that more and more people in the city are finding out about your despicable hobby, doesn't it? You're in the clutches of justice, and very soon they will squeeze you. It's in your best interest to cooperate. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just bad circumstance. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio? Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait, to see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people, I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake. But I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. 
Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. Have you thought it all through? Not yet. It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. This earthenware came a long way from the Staffordshire pottery. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo, this is private property. You lost something. Good day, sir. I've been sent by City Hall to see Mr. Bernadotti about... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! I did try to resolve this peacefully. Sherry, look! This seems familiar. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. This marble fella, it's like he was made after my image. You see it? May I ask for your assistance? 
Sorry, we don't see much here. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch you to pieces. Keep standing in my way and no one will ever see you again. Right, so, yes. Yep, well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa! Oh! This is it. This is where all the magic happens. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely colonies of the great empire. It must be very convenient for a man like Bernadotte. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're ready. I'd hate to intrude. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume? The name is Sherlock Holmes, and I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic end. For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So. This painting is why you broke into my office. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. 
For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, oh, high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me, refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp. You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, 
but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due, especially you, Mr. Bernadotte. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh. He's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more, then. I found the source of Mercurio's artistic inspiration. A photograph. What troubled me was that the sexual act captured was non-consensual. She was violated? Dear God, how despicable. Her abuser was in fact the British envoy. Mercurio took a picture of him committing the atrocity and then used it as... artistic inspiration. I had no idea a mere break-in would eventually expose such barbarity. Mr. Vogel, I want you to make everything public, including the photograph. I'm sure you have a connection at the Cordona Chronicle. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, loyal to your own truth till the end. Yes, I'm acquainted with the staff of the Chronicle. The story is sensational and will surely draw attention to the gallery. But you must be aware that exposing the scandal will further hurt the victim. Does that not bother you? No matter what one does, the truth tends to come out, as well it should. I won't be the one to stand in its way. Though it's only your subjective truth being exposed, not that I'm judging. It's perfectly reasonable for everyone to have their own views. When you called me, you knew exactly what you would get. Oh, but I'm not like you, Mr. Holmes. I cannot be sure of anything. Regardless, I must thank you, for art's sake. Well... Now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. 
I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I'd hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured.